whole entire gospel. I believe in teaching uh, uh, sin, and I, I believe that uh, I don't believe I believe what's happening in the Virgin Church today uh, is is an atrocity because there's nothing wrong with being super friendly. There's nothing wrong with uh, uh, welcoming people in. There's nothing wrong with the music, and I'll present that in here in a little bit. Uh, but the problem with the super friendly church or the Virgin Church is the message, and it's a watered down gospel. James Dobson calls it the fruit cake gospel. So. <laughs> And I love that saying. And uh, the study is intended to illuminate what the Word of God says about uh, worship music, how we're supposed to view music in the church. It's a uh, brief background of the history of the church music and the struggles that ensued as music evolved. Uh, music in the church is highly controversial and has been in the past as well as we will soon see. It is responsible for many church splits. Uh, this study and presentation is meant to allow us to look, first of all, at the scripture and what it has to say, and a little history to hopefully clear up this dividing issue. And what does the Bible say about music? Uh, first of all, we're going to look at uh, some uh, Old Testament scriptures, and uh, th uh, I just want to uh, uh, tell you that this is not exhaustive. If we were to have an exhaustive uh, study on worship music, on the... Uh, the House of Israel in the Old Testament uh, singing, it, it is very, very intensive. It would probably take the rest of the week if not to. Uh, but uh, first of all, we'll look at the Psalms and Hebrew, it's uh, Tehillim, or Praises. It's a book of the Hebrew Bible, Bible taken together. It's 150 sacred poems expressed virtually the full range of Israel's faith. And Psalms defined is uh, psalmos, a set, of, a set piece of music, i.e. sacred ode, accompanied with a voice, harp, or other instruments. A psalm, collectively, uh, the book of Psalms, and just to let you know, a ode is uh, just a lyrical poem set to music. Uh, psalms are the resp inspired responses of human hearts to God's revelation of himself, law, history, and prophecy. Uh, looking at the Psalms alone tells much of the music of, uh, in the life of biblical people. Uh, the extolling of Yahweh through music is spoken as congregational, individual, and for every situation. Uh, music is to praise God joyfully. It's, it's supposed to be done loud, loud. It can be done loudly, uh, melodically, and with a variety of instruments that we'll see. Uh, from chordophones, lyres, harps, skinners, uh, to membranophones, timbrels, to aerophones, flutes, shofars, pipes, and to metallophones or cymbals. Uh, we're going to look at a bunch of psalms. Uh, feel free to uh, open your uh, open your Bibles up to the psalms. Uh, I'm kind of going to go over them real quick, so I'm not saying that you have to turn to them, but uh, I'll show you in a little bit if you'll just turn to uh, Psalm 1. In Psalm 33, it says, sing to him a new song. Play skillfully with a shout of joy. I like this because uh, I'm, I'm currently on the worship team at my church. I play lead guitar and bass guitar and also lead worship. So uh, uh, we have a lot of uh, unskilled, uh, not a lot, should I say. We have some unskilled people that come and they, you know, they, they say God told them that they were supposed to be a worship leader and they're not skilled. So. <laughs> and uh, Psalm 65, 13. The meadows are clothed with flocks, and the valleys are covered with grain. They shout for joy. Yes, they sing. Uh, Psalm 95, 2. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. Uh, my lips will shout for joy when I sing praises to thee, and my soul, which thou hast redeemed. Uh, Psalm 75, 9. But as for me, I will declare it forever. I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. And Psalm 81, 1, for the choir director, on that given, uh, sing for joy to God or strength. Shout joyfully to the God of Jacob. O come, uh, Psalm 95, 1, O come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. 96, 2, sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim good tidings of salvation from day to day. Psalm 98, 4. Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth and sing for joy and sing praises. I 
105.2. Sing to him, sing praises to him, speak of all of his wonders. And uh, this is just a little portrayal of the uh, Levites here. In the temple, the Psalms were chanted daily by professional singers or Levites with instruments. And Old Testament worship leaders, uh, this is where, uh, uh, I'm not sure if it's in Psalm 1, but the, in the beginning of uh, Psalms, uh, oh, let me back up. There are those who direct the music, and it's uh, Psalm, if you look in the beginning of Psalm 4, 1, 5, 1, 6, 1, uh, it also instructs us to uh, which instruments to accompany them with. If you look at uh, you know, the beginning, it'll say uh, prior to, I don't know, Psalm 1, uh, 2, and 3, but 4, 1, 5, 1, 6, 1, it'll say to be accompanied with a harp, to be accompanied with a lyre. So it's not only songs that we're supposed to be singing, but it, it actually tells us what kind of uh, instruments we're supposed to uh, uh, use. So uh, not too many people play the lyre or the uh, membrane. Uh, 1 Samuel 18, 6 and 7, when the men were returning home after David, after David had killed the Philistines, the women came out from all the towns of Israel to meet King Saul with singing and dancing, uh, with joyful songs and, uh, and with tambourines and lutes. As they danced, they sang, Saul has slain his thousands and David his tens of thousands. So they were, they were singing about slaughtering people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For all the uh, next military in here. Uh, uh, First Chronicles 15, 16 through 22. David instructs the Levites to get the band together with singers and musicians to sing joyful songs. Uh, and there's our word uh, again, uh, the singers and the musicians. So they were uh, uh, they were skillful people. Uh, they had they also had unskillful people as well, uh, because the whole entire house of Israel said. Not everybody is uh, musically uh, known. They still sing. Kenanai, the head Levite, was in charge of the singing. That was his responsibility because he was skillful at it. There you go for your uh, uh, worship leaders. He was skillful at it. Uh, this is uh, very interesting. Please turn to this uh, verse in Deuteronomy 31 19. Uh, during my study, uh, this just absolutely shouted out because I, I, I never knew this. Until let me know when you get there. 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 One more. One more. Three more. Three more. Three more. Now write down for yourselves the song and teach it to the Israelites and have them sing it. So that it may be a witness for me against them when I have brought when I brought them into the land flowing with milk and honey, the land of promise on oath to their forefathers. And when they eat their fill and thrive, they will turn to other gods and worship them, rejecting me and breaking my covenant. So, uh, uh, looking at the scripture and I study it, and there's uh, a couple things uh, I, I believe that God wrote this, whether it was divinely inspired, uh, I'm not really sure, but it's just like a saying that God wrote the Bible. Uh, man write it. Inspired. Same thing. God writes a worship song. There it is. So, uh, never knew that. Uh, and the 